Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake, and in today's Photoshop tutorial, I'm gonna show you some quick and easy ways to really just make uh, images pop in Photoshop uh, using some really simple and straightforward techniques. This shot is one that I got um, at DragonCon this year. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to an image like this uh, when in Photoshop rather than Lightroom to really just make it uh, pop and get a really interesting high contrast look. So uh, let's walk through some of the basic things that I'm initially gonna wanna do to this image. Uh, right off the bat, I want to adjust the curves. And for me, a lot of times that's gonna be experimentation, but I have a general idea of how I'm gonna want to do that. And already you can see that this image is looking considerably less flat with the adjustments that I'm making here. So I think that as far as setting a, a medium curve, that that's actually really good overall. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the reds and the blues. I think that maybe, just maybe, these are fine by themselves, but I think I do want to pull back some of the red, maybe not a lot of it. And as for the blue, I think that's fine. But as far as um, high contrast, we can actually go directly into an adjustment layer for brightness and contrast. So if I do want to get this image just a little brighter and I want to increase the contrast, I can do that right here with these sliders non-destructively and I can always pull that back and you see if I do the image gets more flat and if I take it forward it pops more it's just more dynamic and if I think that's too harsh in areas like the face it's no problem because um, there is this uh, brightness contrast tool so uh, what I can do here is I can zoom in to the face and if I want I can uh, take a brush tool, go ahead and get a black brush. 30% uh, opacity is probably fine here. And I can pull back some of that contrast here in the face in areas that I don't necessarily want it. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, zoom back out. And okay, so that's looking really good overall. Uh, levels, I can go ahead and I can adjust the levels. And if I pull this slider, things will get darker. Uh, if I adjust this, the gradation between uh, light to dark will change uh, substantially. Here, we'll get things brighter. So for me, this is uh, just making the darks darker and the lights lighter. And I don't want to get everything super blown out, so I'm just going to be very careful with that. And I think that that looks good. If I think it's too blown out here in this corner, again, it's no problem. I just take my brush, make sure I have the mask selected, and I could just paint out over there and it's fine. Uh, and I'll just do the same thing here with the brightness and contrast for this corner, just because I think that that contributed to it. And let's go ahead and just bump that up some more. And here on the levels as well. And so you can see that brings back some of the detail that I was missing there. So that looks uh, pretty good, and we haven't really even done a lot to this yet. So that's straightforward enough. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add a gradient map. If you've seen my previous tutorial on gradient maps, uh, you'll know that this is an art more than a science, and there's a lot of different things you can do with it. There we go. I'm going to, uh, that's way too harsh. Uh, I'm going to try like maybe a 15, 20% soft light uh i think that looks good maybe go to 30 35 something like that so you can see before and after that that's just a lot more visually striking it just brings the model more off of the background so i definitely like that okay so i like that in terms of high contrast and tonality but let's give this um just more of an overall look let's go ahead and uh adjust the hue and saturation on here and um, we're gonna do that and create just more of a just different type of look for this. And again, you can do this uh, any way you want. I'm just showing you how I might approach this particular image. You know, I think I actually do like that. All right, I actually think um, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna leave that in place. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, let me go ahead and group these so you just get a better idea for it. And this is what we had um, before. 
And this is what we have afterward. Now, again, you could do this stuff uh, and get more or less the same results using Adobe Lightroom. You could use Camera Raw, but if you're just more comfortable with Photoshop, this is a non-destructive way to go ahead and just add something else to your images. Uh, you can see that every incremental change we did here had a huge impact on just making this uh, photo the best it could be. So you could do this and it'll dramatically improve the quality of nearly any photo that you want to do. And you don't have to go as far. Um, if you don't like uh, the curves adjustment and you think it's uh, too much, you could just go without it. Uh, we could even pull this back. We could pull this back by as much as 50%. And that actually is a lot less harsh in the shadows, especially in the face. And uh, I think that makes the image better. So the other cool thing about non-destructive editing is anything you do, uh, you can adjust it here or you can get rid of it or you can modify it, you can mask it. Um, and you can keep that from overpowering the image or just certain areas of the image. So that's all really cool and convenient. And it's just one of the most powerful ways you can use adjustment layers in Photoshop. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Uh, don't forget to check out the other Photoshop tutorial uh, videos in my series. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you have questions. Go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.